if you would like to enjoy all my work ad-free, as well as exclusive Sleepy Cat stories and more perks, then please consider becoming a patron and supporting this channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepycatmeditations. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who have already helped Sleepy Cat along the way. You make all of this possible. And now, I hope you enjoy tonight's creation. A warm welcome to a brand new episode of You're a Wizard, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. And when you are ready, just allow the eyelids to feel heavier and heavier until they gently close. Before we begin, we will do a short guided breathing pattern called 3, 4, 5. This will allow you to slow down and relax preparing your body and your mind for a wonderful, peaceful rest. When you are ready, breathe in through the nose for three. Hold for four. And breathe out for five. Let all of it go now. Again, that's in for three. Hold for four. And release, blowing away the thoughts of yesterday, today and tomorrow. Again, in for three. Hold, and let it go. Continue to breathe in this way in your own time, and with each breath out, allow your body to sink just that bit deeper into your mattress. And now, allow the breath to fall back into a natural rhythm. Enjoy this new relaxation flowing through your body. 
let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. Christmas Magic at Hogwarts Your story begins deep in the heart of the Forbidden Forest on a crisp winter's morning as you sit atop your faithful unicorn, Olwyn, Queen of the Forest. Her mane glistens with starlight and her pure white hair is soft to the touch. In the few months since your first adventure to this magical school, you have shared many wonderful moments with Alwyn. The two of you have developed quite the bond, and now, every week, without fail, you make time to come and visit her here in this enchanted forest. Accompanying you on Alwyn, is your lovely companion, Daphne, the house elf. She sits in front of you, humming a happy tune and swaying from left to right. Daphne is your most faithful friend and has helped you so much on your journey through magic. She has filled your days with happiness, warmth, and elven enchantment, and for that you are eternally grateful. To your right, another unicorn rides alongside you, a fraction smaller than Olwyn, and perched on top sits your best friend, who has been by your side since the very beginning of this enchanting adventure. The two of you share a quiet, knowing smile, the kind shared between very old friends as you both bask in the peace and silence of the winter forest. All around you, the bare branches of the trees are topped with a thin layer of snow and the forest floor is a vast sea of brown leaves, coated in a glistening winter frost. The morning sunrise seeps through the forest, filling the land with thick golden rays that shimmer on the snow and illuminate the trunks of the ancient trees. The cool, crisp air that brushes your cheeks makes you glad for your thick woolly hat, your scarf and your gloves, all in the colours of your wizarding house. As you ride in a gentle rhythm, you allow your mind to wander as you reminisce on your wizarding saga and remember how you arrived here. Detailed images begin to flash through your mind in a slideshow of wonderful memories. Your adventure began with a mysterious letter arriving by Owl, which took you through a magical port key. And then, in a dark snicket of London, you were greeted by a black and white sleepy cat your guardian on this adventure, who led you directly to the magical alley. Once there, you ventured deep into the vaults of the Goblin Bank, recovering your wizarding money, before collecting your books, your robes, and your wand. After a visit to the magical sweet shop, you spent a cosy evening in the witch's tavern at the end of the street. The next day, you were greeted by your friendly giant, who led you through the flu network 
to King's Cross. From there, you took the hidden entrance to platform nine and three quarters before boarding the enchanted steam train. On arriving at the school, you took the famous boats across the lake. And this is when you first laid eyes on the castle that you now call home. You can still remember the Gothic towers standing proud against a backdrop of starlight, illuminated by the silver glow of the moon. Inside the castle came the sorting ceremony where you and your best friend were both placed into the same wizarding house. And after a feast to remember, you finally got to stay in your house common room. On the first day of lessons, you made friends with the lovely house elf Daphne, who has been by your side ever since. Before lessons began, you were summoned to the headmaster's office, and there he gave you the gift of your very first broomstick. Then came your first flying lesson. You remember soaring above the castle, over the forbidden forest, and across the vast grounds of the school, guarded by the headmaster's phoenix. You went on to study the art of transfiguration before experiencing a wonderful lesson in care of magical creatures. And it was in that lesson when your friendship with Olwyn began. Your most recent adventure was on Halloween, where you were woken up by the smiling, singing Daphne, bringing you some of her enchanted elven tea. There was a ghostly breakfast banquet filled with festive magic, music, dancing, and delicious food. Afterwards, you endured your first potions class with the ominous potions master, scraping through the lesson by the skin of your teeth and with a little help from your trusty Daphne. After class, you ventured inside the enchanted willow tree through a hidden tunnel underground before arriving at the shrieking shack. Your journey carried you into the heart of the wizarding village where you enjoyed a nice warm butterbeer with your best friend. There, you were greeted once again by your gentle giant who took you through an enormous pumpkin patch and back to his cozy hut. And here you were surprised by a wonderful reunion with your black and white sleepy cat. Together, you and all of your companions ventured into the forbidden forest. In this magical woodland, you were greeted by the centaurs and treated to a breathtaking display of magic. You soared above the forest and floated among the stars before finally descending back down to your giant's hut where a warm supper was waiting for you. And now, here you are in the heart of December edging just that bit closer to Christmas. Today is a day of festive magic and wonder, and tonight you have the wizard's winter ball. You can feel the fresh excitement running through you as you ponder on what your day might have in store. Your journey takes you through a thicket of smaller trees now, and Olwyn trots along the breaking bramble and the snow-kissed leaves, leading you down a winding woodland path. In the distance, 
you can hear the sound of a brass band humming gently on the winter breeze. And as you emerge from this hidden magical pathway, you are met by a beautiful sight. In front of you now are collections of cozy cottages with thatched roofs covered in thick snow. The cobbled paths crisscross through the old crooked buildings and beaming from the frosty windows are colourful Christmas lights. In the middle of the street is a small brass band. Their golden instruments glisten in the late morning sun and the precious melodies ripple through the air. Behind them stands a tall, proud Christmas tree, dusted with frost. It is wrapped in golden fairy lights and dotted with enchanted baubles. Perched on top is a huge witch's hat, pulsing in a soft gold. A small crowd gathers around the tree swaying gently to the music and basking in the festive magic. And then, in perfect timing, a gentle snowfall begins to weave down from the sky, coating this charming winter village in a soft white glitter and kissing your cheeks with specks of cold You take in this perfect picture and share a smile with your best friend. You hold Daphne tight, who admits that watching the first snowfall at the beginning of winter is one of her favourite things in the world. It is a beautiful moment, capturing all the magic of Christmas and capturing all of the peace and comfort of the wizarding world that is your home. In the next moment, you shuffle off Alwyn with ease, helping Daphne down with you, and you thank your wonderful unicorn for bringing you here. She ruffles her mane and rests her head on your shoulder. Her affectionate sniffs tickle your neck and your ear as you chuckle away happily. You stroke her soft head and tell her that you will see her soon. Alwyn and her companion offer the three of you a low bow before turning back together and galloping away into the depths of the forest. You take in this world around you and breathe a happy sigh as you realize that you are finally back where you belong. With a new excitement, the three of you walk through the crooked cobbled streets, passing by small crowds of witches and wizards. There is a jovial spirit in the air and you are met by many smiles, good mornings, and even the occasional handshake from one or two acquaintances that you have made over the past months. 
Daphne leads the way now, and you find it difficult to keep up with her as she shifts impatiently between a fast walk and an excited run. You cannot help but smile at the innocence of your companion. You allow yourself to just let go of everything now as you take in the wonder and the magic that is completely enveloping you. Along the infinite rooftops, the chimneys puff with delight as a thick white smoke ascends into the sky and a concoction of enticing smells mingles through the streets. There is bread baking, rich hot chocolate and mulled wine, roast dinners and fresh apple pie. Over to your right is a small crooked shop with a dark green door. A large bay window protrudes into the street, lined with golden fairy lights. Through the frosted glass, you can see beautiful Christmas decorations filling the store. There are toy soldiers marching together, a magical steam train speeding around the shop floor and weaving perfectly between the happy customers and the excited children. There are spinning candy canes in the window and a huge cauldron of bubbling hot chocolate perched in the middle of the shop. An old bookshelf lines one wall, filled with a collection of colourful books that are illuminated by floating candles flickering in orange and gold. You wander past a navy blue door with a golden handle and two square windows either side. In the windows are displays of enchanted winter clothes, self-tying snow boots, school robes lined with fur, mittens that pulse with a magical warmth, and thick winter scarves that when not being worn can be rolled up to the size of a penny and kept safely in your pocket. You also see old fashioned wooden sledges, hand carved and lined with different colours. There are collections of ice skates hanging at the back of the shop and along the right hand wall are beautiful winter rugs filled with deep enchantments. In the left window sits a huge snow globe, three feet high, with a magical moving scene inside. There are reindeers pulling a large sleigh over the white rooftops of the village, which is full of happy folk drifting in and out of the shops and along the snowy streets. The radiant northern lights illuminate the ceiling of the globe, causing the falling snow to pulse in a kaleidoscope of colour. You cannot help but smile at all of the magic that surrounds you. Even after all this time, the wizarding world still manages to surprise you. You journey on down the narrow street and over to your left is a jet black door lined with silver. The windows are foggy and dusted with a faint soot. This potions shop is hardly singing with the spirit of Christmas at the moment, and through the murky glass you can see an old alchemist sitting at his desk, 
tinkering away with various potion pots and jars of ingredients. There are many cauldrons bubbling over emerald and sapphire flames with colorful steam mingling through the air. Tatty old books are scattered across the alchemist's table and you wonder how he could ever make sense of such clutter. But this place is not completely without festivity. You can see the old alchemist enjoying a warm goblet of mulled wine and with a flick of his wand the fireplace begins to crackle with rich orange flames and a tiny Christmas tree bursts to life in the window peppered with gold and silver lights. Your eyes widen with amazement and as if seeing your reaction you notice the old alchemist giving a very subtle smile. The next window that you pass is lined with a thick emerald garland dotted with frosted pine cones and twinkling lights. Inside is a collection of wooden chairs and tables filled with witches and wizards enjoying a hot cup of cocoa, tea or coffee and sharing some magical festive snacks. As the door swings open and a young witch leaves the cafe you can hear the faint sound of Christmas jazz playing from inside. In one corner a group of friends play a rather intense game of wizard's poker. A deck of cards floats above the middle of the table and shuffles itself with absolute precision before dealing the next hand. There are one or two patrons perched at the high tables on the left, sipping their self-stirring coffee or nibbling on a floating mince pie and reading their favorite book as it hovers next to them. And then you watch a very elderly wizard shuffling to the table by the window in front of you. He carries two deluxe hot chocolates, one of them for his young grandson who waits patiently with an eager smile. From his pocket, the grandpa reveals two Christmas cookies with faces drawn on them with red and white icing. Suddenly, the enchanted faces on the cookies begin to sing proudly, which sends the young grandson into fits of laughter and he gives his grandpa a big warm hug. Together, they enjoy their festive singing snack, chuckling away and sipping on their warm hot chocolate. It is a wonderful thing to witness, a snapshot of pure innocence and love. Moments like these are what Christmas is all about. All of a sudden, you feel a gentle tug at your coat and you turn to see Daphne hopping up and down excitedly. She invites you to join her at the wizard's tavern for a warm butter beer, where she has a nice surprise waiting for you. You share a mischievous smile with your best friend and agree resolutely that it is about time for a warm butter beer by a cozy fire and together the three of you wander off to the end of the cobbled street. As you pass through the main square, there is a small chapel topped with a dusting of snow. 
In the next moment, the clock strikes three and the bells ring out. Just in time, you hear Daphne whisper to herself and you wonder what on earth your lovely companion could be planning. Before you know it, you have left the busy street behind you and are standing on the doorstep of the wizard's tavern. The metal sign swings in the breeze above you and is characterized by three broomsticks crossing over each other. Without another hesitation, you swing open the door and you welcome the wave of warmth that greets you. A gurgling fire sits in the corner and oil lanterns are dotted around the room, scented with Christmas oils. You can smell apple, cinnamon and gingerbread and the flickering candles illuminate the tavern with a soft golden light. One or two wizards are perched at the bar flipping through today's paper and groups of friends are huddled around the wooden tables talking away over a mulled wine or butter beer. Daphne leads you round a corner to a small private nook and you beam with delight at the sight of your friendly giant smiling through his grizzly black beard. He gives you a shy wave and whispers, surprise, with blushing red cheeks and a little chuckle. Perched on his lap is none other than your black and white sleepy cat. They leap from the giant's knee and run up to you, giving a happy meow and a soft purr. You stroke under their chin and tickle their belly as they roll around with delight. Here is your oldest companion of this saga. It was this little cat who you saw from your bedroom window the day you received your letter. They brought you to the magical alley and kept watch over you on your first day as a wizard. You sit down at the table between your best friend and your gentle giant and opposite little Daphne. Your sleepy cat jumps onto your knee and purrs away in bliss, having been reunited with their favourite human. In the next moment, you are met by a kind witch carrying four tankards and greeting you with a smile. She places down the drinks and your taste buds tingle at the smell of this warm butterscotch beer. There is a wonderful atmosphere felt by all of you. It is that sense of peace when in the company of very dear friends knowing that you have this time, this precious time together, to simply be. The four of you lift your drinks, clink them together, and toast your friendship before taking your first sip. There is a delicious taste on your lips and a beautiful warmth entering your mouth and softening your tongue. You feel this warmth travelling down your body and landing in the pit of your stomach and after a few hours out in the cold this couldn't have come at a better time. A light conversation mingles around the table as your happy group reminisces on the adventures that you have shared together. 
You talk about your favorite memories with each person. The lovely Daphne, your best friend, and of course, your gentle giant. You enjoy the sounds of the crackling fire and sip away at the warming butter beer as you allow yourself to bask in this moment. You are incredibly grateful for your three companions. They have made your time here absolutely magical and filled your days with joy and laughter and at times mischief. Gradually, the conversation turns to tonight and the wizard's winter ball. You wonder what the great hall will look like with all the decorations, and you begin to fantasize about the festive feast that awaits you. As you finish the last mouthful of your delicious drink, the giant tells you that the black lake has frozen over and that the teachers are going to turn it into an ice rink. You'd better head over soon, he tells you, if you want to enjoy the ice while it's fresh. But to get there quickly, he adds, you're going to need some help. And with a subtle wink, your giant pulls back the curtain to his right. Your eyes widen as the curtain reveals two brand new sledges, just like the ones in the shop window. They are hand carved and polished to perfection and topped with a big red bow. An early Christmas treat for you both, your giant says. With a happy heart, you both leap into his huge, gentle arms, thanking him over and over, until he waves a hand, insisting that it was nothing, nothing at all. And besides, this particular present is from him and little Daphne, he says. Together, the three of you turn to look at the elf. You find her swaying in her seat with an unusually hazy smile, and in her hand is not one tankard, but three, all empty. You ask her how she managed to drink all of that butter beer, but she can only muster a loud hiccup in reply, and the four of you erupt in uncontrollable laughter as little Daphne gives a proud grin. And now, with a warm belly and a new excitement for the rest of your day, you pay the kind witch at the bar and wander out of the tavern, back into the cool, crisp air of the enchanting winter, your sleepy cat fast asleep in your arms. Your giant holds Daphne's hand and helps her to walk in a nice straight line as you continue to chuckle at your lovely friend. Outside, the snowfall has stopped and the landscape is blanketed with a fresh carpet of white glistening in the late afternoon sun. The air is cool, but the warmth from your butter beer keeps you at the perfect temperature. Your gentle giant turns to you all and bids you a farewell. He has some final arrangements to finish before the ball tonight, but with a smile, he reminds you to come back to his hut after ice skating for you have left your evening outfits there, and he has also arranged a little surprise for you. But all will be revealed in time. 
He takes the tired, sleepy cat from your arms and carries them over his shoulder as he shuffles off in the snow, back towards his house and down the shallow hill to your left. You watch his enormous silhouette gradually disappear against the golden rays and you smile with a satisfied sigh. The fresh air seems to have worked its magic on Daphne, who is back to her usual self and much more composed now. She stands next to your sledges and casts a powerful spell on them. With this magic, she tells you, your sledges can move by themselves and travel uphill so they can carry you on your long journey back to the lake. She insists that you mustn't delay any longer, for the ice party is just getting started. And with that, you perch yourself on your brand new sledge, hand carved and inscribed with your name in gold writing. The sledge gives a little shuffle in the snow and Daphne sits in front of you. She clicks her fingers, and the three of you share a beaming smile, as gradually your sledges begin to move by themselves, taking you back up the snowy hill and towards the castle of your dreams. And now you can completely let go. There is nothing left to do and nothing left to think. This enchanted sledge will keep you safe on your journey as it weaves through the fresh fallen snow and you can simply enjoy the ride and take in the wonderful landscape all around you. Over to your right is a small patch of fir trees swaying gently in the breeze, their green needles dusted with frost. They appear to be moving ever so slightly along the hillside as if joining you on your adventure. And suddenly, within the trees, you can see a family of reindeer shuffling through the little woodland grove and looking over at you. There is clearly a deep enchantment within these animals, and you are met with a wave of peace. You suddenly feel protected and looked after. Their huge antlers create majestic silhouettes in front of the trees, and their beautiful brown fur seems to illuminate with a faint gold dust. For a moment, you think you might be imagining this perfect picture of nature, but as you turn to your companions, you can see your best friend smiling in awe, a happy tear in their eye. Yes, this moment is as real as the glorious sun high above you, as real as the crisp cool snow that you trace your fingers through, and as real as the enchanted wooden sledge that carries you through this storybook paradise. There isn't a single speck of this land that hasn't been touched by magic, and you feel so lucky to call this place your home. In the next moment, 
your sledge reaches the top of the hill, and as you glide over it, you are greeted by the most breathtaking sight of all. High above you in the distance is the castle that you know so well. The infinite windows glisten with golden lights, and the towers stand proud and mighty, topped with blankets of white. Instantly, this castle evokes a feeling of comfort unlike anything that you have felt before. You have dreamt of this place for as long as you can remember, and now here you are, living your dreams. You know that no matter where life takes you, you can always come back to this castle of wonder, to bask in the beauty of magic, and to be at one with the wonderful wizarding world. And now, edging closer to you, is the huge black lake, completely frozen over, and transformed from dark black to a rich sapphire. Students and teachers alike are already enjoying the festivities. Groups of witches and wizards are playing in the snow, skating on the lake and having snowball fights on the hill. You turn back and steal one final glance at the family of reindeer, still watching over you, and still mingled among the frosted fir trees. Bit by bit, this perfect picture begins to fade, and you approach the hustle and bustle of the ice skating party as all of the faces become clearer. Many of the students you recognize and know very well now. Some of them turn to you with a smile and a wave, happy to see you and excited for you to join in the fun. Slowly now, your sledges come to a stop, and you thank Daphne for that wonderful journey. She gives a proud smile, and reminds you that she will always be there for you, and has many more tricks up her sleeve yet. With a new excitement, you and your friend take out your wands, and cast a powerful but complicated charm on your feet. Suddenly, your feet hum with a warm, tingling sensation, and you watch a pair of ice skates begin to take the place of your shoes. A thick leather in your favorite color wraps around the back of your heel, up your ankle, and around your toes. As the laces begin to tie by themselves, you see a shimmering silver blade form on the soles of your boots. Not only are these skates your own magical creation, but they are also filled with a deep enchantment, an enchantment that will allow you to skate in complete freedom, never slipping or falling, and giving you abilities on the ice that you may never have had before. Without another hesitation, you climb to your feet and shuffle on to the rink. Slow and steady, you begin to gracefully glide along the frost-kissed sapphire, and already 
a beautiful freedom is washing over you. The lovely Daphne has already set off on her own skates and is whizzing round the ice like a little lightning bolt, having very wholesome interactions with many of the students. She is helping those who are struggling to keep their balance and performing tricks with some of the more experienced skaters. Every now and then she catches your eye and gives you a proud, beaming smile. You soar around the lake now, completely at ease in your own little world and completely at one with the ice. You pass by many of your friends and share a sweeping moment with some of them, spinning round on the ice, laughing together or trying out silly dance moves. Many of the teachers are surrounding the lake, keeping watch over the proceedings, with one or two even joining in. All of a sudden, the teachers begin to cast their combined magic, and they turn this huge frozen lake into a winter wonderland. Ice sculptures are lifting from the lake, decorated with pulsing lights and Christmas garlands. There are dolphins of pure ice ascending in a crystal blue above you and reflecting the golden sun in a ripple of colour. You watch a frost giant being carved before your eyes in impeccable detail. There are crystal eagles flying above you, beating their wings of ice and gliding over the landscape. There is a long arched bridge lifting from the surface, made from bricks of blue ice, and students try to slide up and over it as quick as they can. You see a huge elephant emerge from the ice and collections of deer carving by themselves. You slowly glide around the endless sculptures and take in this new world that has been created just for you. If you were not here in this moment, you would never believe the magic that is unfolding before your eyes. It's as if you have stumbled into an enchanted winter garden filled with colourful decorations, intricate ice sculptures and an enormous Christmas tree in the exact middle, rippling in emerald, silver and gold. Just then, you catch a glimpse of the firm-faced potions master watching on from afar, without even the hint of a smile. But there is something about him, and you notice that he is muttering a low spell to himself with his eyes darting around the ice. As you follow his gaze, you see that tiny cracks are beginning to form on the ice rink, but as the professor casts his spell, the cracks repair themselves and seal up stronger than ever. With a smile, 
you realize that he is keeping this entire party safe and looking after each and every one of you. His dark, stoic exterior may never reveal this, but you know now that he cares deeply about all the students here, and suddenly you feel comforted by his presence. A new warmth fills your heart and you feel as though you have been let in on a hidden secret about your potions professor. You decide that to respect his privacy, you will keep this little secret to yourself. In the next moment, you are joined by your best friend and by Daphne both of whom greet you with a wide smile as you swirl together on the ice. And then you and your best friend lift Daphne up and place her on one shoulder each. The two of you begin to glide around the winter garden and slide over the ice bridge as fast as you can with your lovely companion perched on your shoulders, chuckling away happily. All of a sudden, the sky turns from shimmering gold to a rich purple and orange. You look over to the horizon and you watch the sun and the moon meeting at the edge of the world. Together they create a beautiful beacon that blends through the sky in all the colours of the rainbow. The mighty castle watches over you, illuminated by this enchanting sunset and forever guarding you on your magical journey. You take this moment to bask in the beauty that surrounds you, the swirling colours, the ice sculptures and the perfect castle of your dreams. You gaze around the happy students, the proud teachers, and the breathtaking landscape. You are so grateful for your wizarding life here, in this wonderful world that you call home. And just then, Daphne whispers to the two of you that it is nearly time to get ready for the winter ball and you should head back to the giant's hut. With a smile, she tells you not to worry, for she will take you there in a flash. The little elf holds your hand and you feel yourself slowly lift. The world around you begins to swirl into a blur of colour as all clarity is lost and a feeling of weightlessness washes over you. As you leave the winter wonderland behind and the hustle and bustle of the crowds begins to disappear you can hear the faint crackle of a fire growing louder and louder as the enchanted symphony of sunset fades away. You find yourself lying down on a beautiful soft sofa in the giant's hut covered in a thick blanket. You are met by the smiling face of your gentle giant 
as he welcomes you back to his cosy little abode. Daphne has worked her magic once again and brought you here safely. She holds your hand and tells you that there is no need to get ready just yet. And if you would like to, there is time for a short nap. Already you can feel your eyelids becoming heavier and heavier as the new warmth envelops you like a soft blanket of comfort. You glance over to your best friend who is already fast asleep, no doubt dreaming of the winter's ball. In the next moment, your black and white sleepy cat jumps up to join you, giving off their soft hypnotic purr that lulls you even further into comfort as you feel yourself going deeper and deeper towards the magic of sleep. You feel a new softness over your brow and your eyes, and no matter how hard you try, it is impossible to keep them open. Your cheeks are warm and your tongue and jaw are soft. You feel a beautiful warmth trickle down your neck, relaxing all of the muscles in your neck and shoulders. Your arms hang heavy by your side and your hands tingle with a soft vibration. Your breathing becomes nice and slow, expanding from the belly and releasing any remaining thoughts. Your legs are filled with a new warmth that is melting away tension in your thighs and calves. Your feet tingle with delight as your whole body becomes heavy and completely free. Here you are, guarded by Daphne in your gentle giant and enveloped in the magic of this perfect castle. You are completely safe here and you allow yourself to just let go. You allow the sound of your purring companion and the crackle of the fire to just wash over you as bit by bit you become heavier and heavier. You can rest now. A wonderful world of dreams is at your command and when you wake up it will be time to get ready for the wizard's winter ball where a whole new adventure will be waiting for you You find yourself waking up from a short nap in the middle of the giant's hut, wrapped in a soft blanket 
on the huge sofa where you fell asleep, surrounded by comfort and warmth. Your black and white sleepy cat sits on your lap, having woken from a deep slumber. They shuffle around and eventually find the perfect position between your arm and your hip. However, it doesn't look too comfortable. Their legs are pointing to the roof and their head is skewed on an awkward angle. But somehow your little friend is purring louder than ever and appears utterly content. You gaze sleepily around this charming little abode and take in your surroundings. There is a log fire gurgling inside a mismatched brick fireplace. Hanging from the fireplace are various pots and pans, and perched on the mantelpiece are one or two picture frames. You can see a small picture of your gentle giant standing with you, your best friend, and the wonderful elf, Daphne, and an involuntary smile creeps across your face. Thick wooden beams trace the ceiling above you and arch up into the pointed roof, which is slightly off-center. Hanging from the beams are reams of thick rope, dozens of different sized wooden cages, and three lanterns flickering with a soft candlelight. There is a crooked wardrobe almost swaying in the corner of the room, and a huge wooden chest sits next to it, no doubt filled with various pairs of giant muddy boots. Outside the small window to your left, you see that night is already upon you, but with a quick glance to the old ticking clock, you realize that it is only just five. On the armchair next to you, your best friend is waking up too, shuffling out of their sleep and giving you a hazy smile. In the next moment, you are met by the beautiful humming voice that you know so well, and the pitter-patter of little footsteps coming around the corner and bringing with them an enchanting smell. Little Daphne beams with joy at the sight of you, and she carries a small wooden tray with two little wooden cups. A glistening purple liquid swirls inside, radiating a hypnotic smell. There are hints of blackberry, apple, and honey. A little pick-me-up, she whispers with a proud grin one of her own creations. Without another hesitation, you take the tiny teacup and finish this warm, silky drink in only two mouthfuls. Instantly, a wonderful tingling sensation pulses through your body, from the very top of your head, all the way down to the tips of your toes, and a new energy bubbles inside you. Slowly now you shuffle yourself out of bed and accidentally nudge your sleepy cat. They leap onto the floor and strut away into the next room without so much as a glance in your direction, their tail high and proud. Well, looks like you might be in the doghouse for that one. With a nice, big yawn, you enjoy a soothing stretch and take in this perfect atmosphere as brief memories from the day flick through your mind. You think of Olwyn, your wonderful unicorn and queen of the forbidden forest. You remember the enchanting winter village with the brass band the cozy shops, and the festive magic. 
you smile at the thought of the lovely grandpa and his grandson sharing a deluxe hot chocolate, simply enjoying their Christmas season together. All of a sudden, Daphne's hazy smile after three too many butter beers comes to your mind, and you chuckle at this unforgettable moment. Your thoughts turn to your enchanted sledge, gifted to you by Daphne and your gentle giant, and your journey back to the castle where you were greeted by a family of reindeer. Pictures of the great lake and the winter wonderland appear in your mind with the spectacular ice sculptures. You feel a new warmth in your heart as you remember your stern-faced potions master secretly keeping everybody safe during the party, using a hidden spell to repair any cracks on the ice. And now, here you are, well rested after a peaceful nap in your giant's hut, and waiting to embark on your next adventure. Speaking of your gentle giant, where has he got to? As if hearing your thoughts, Daphne reassures you that he will be back very soon. He is just finishing some final preparations for tonight and she quickly covers her mouth, failing miserably to hide her smile as her eyes glisten above her hand. Your little companion is clearly involved in whatever the giant is planning, and you are not sure if you are excited or slightly nervous. Changing the subject now, Daphne insists it is time to get ready and instructs the two of you to stand just there, please, in front of the fireplace. Your companion can be quite bossy when she wants to be, and with a knowing glance to your best friend, you try your best to stifle a smirk. With the click of Daphne's fingers, you feel yourself lift precisely two inches off the ground, and you are met by a sudden feeling of weightlessness. In front of you now, the swaying wardrobe opens by itself, and floating out from the dark depths of the cupboard are two pristine outfits, and at the sight of yours, a new excitement bubbles in your stomach. Daphne asks you to trust her now, and you allow yourself to completely let go as you begin to rotate very slowly in the air. You can feel a wonderful warmth wrapping around you, and you watch your new outfit beginning to merge with your winter clothes the colors mingle together and the fabrics interweave, but all you can feel is a soft, tingling sensation, as if you are being enveloped by a huge blanket. In the next moment, you are met by a gentle darkness, and there is a soft vibration rippling over your head. It's almost as if you are in your very own enchanted spa, and you feel fresh, warm, and cozy. You enjoy these wonderful sensations as the magic of Daphne washes over your entire body. Gently now, your feet plant back down onto the floor. A new light illuminates your closed eyelids, 
and very slowly you blink them open. Little Daphne holds up a mirror, giving a proud ta-da, and you are utterly speechless at the sight before you. Your entire wardrobe has changed. Your warm winter clothes are hanging by the fire, and you are kitted out to the nines in your spectacular winter's ball attire. You feel clean and energized and ready to feast, dance, and laugh the night away. Your best friend also looks fantastic in their outfit, and you share a beaming smile, the two of you bursting with anticipation for the new adventure that awaits you tonight. You bring Daphne into a warm hug and thank her for her never-ending magic. You will forever be grateful for your lovely little friend and your constant companion. Daphne never fails to make each moment just that bit more enchanting, and you feel comforted by the fact that no matter where life takes you, this kind elf will always be around to help you, to keep you company, and to watch over you whenever you need it. In the next moment, the door swings open, almost flying off the hinges, and your giant bundles back inside his hut. A winter frost mingles on his breath, and he rubs his huge hands together as his rosy red cheeks glow against the firelight. He walks past you, slightly preoccupied, before doing a comical double take, and suddenly he cheers with joy at just how brilliant you both look. He applauds the ever-magnificent Daphne for all of her hard work, and the elf gives a shy bow. You can't be sure, but it looks as if your gentle giant has combed his hair. Your best friend notices too, and you share a secret look, mouthing the question to each other. As a matter of fact, I have comes the bellowing voice as the huge, shadowy figure looks between the pair of you, clearly sensing the four eyes staring at his slightly less frizzy hair. He gives a low grumble under his breath and flushes bright red. Not meaning to offend, you insist that actually he looks very dapper, your lovely giant softens at this remark, asking if you really think so. Your best friend doubles down, reassuring your giant that it suits him very much. And with a loud chuckle, he brings you in to a tight squeeze, letting you know that you both mean the world to him. You both mean the world. And just then, the door creaks open with an elegance it has never known. And standing in the doorway is the wily old headmaster. His long grey beard tickles the floor, and his festive robes are pulsing in ruby and gold. He peers over his spectacles, offering only the twitch of a smile but his eyes sparkle with mischief, warmth, and kindness. He asks politely if you are ready to depart, for the carriage is waiting. Carriage? You look to your gentle giant now, who shuffles sheepishly, before a beaming smile appears through his beard, and, unable to contain the surprise any longer, he insists that you follow him. You step outside into the cool winter night, 
where the proud, pulsing moon stands huge in the sky, backed by an infinite cosmos of glitter. Your eyes flick back down, and perched on the path outside is a single black carriage, glistening with a soft starlight. And there, standing at the front of the carriage, is none other than Olwyn, Queen of the Forest, and your ever-faithful unicorn. You stare in amazement, and the giant whispers to you that Olwyn came galloping out of the forest while he was preparing the carriage. Nuzzling up to him she was, and wouldn't leave until he gave her the reins. Practically fastened herself in, she did. You have clearly made a friend for life, as Olwyn was absolutely adamant that she would be the one to bring you to the ball. You stroke her soft head now, and meet her gentle gaze. Her eyes swim with magic, and instantly you are met by an unspeakable comfort. You know that you are completely safe here, protected by this wonderful unicorn, your gentle giant, the kind headmaster, Daphne, and your best friend. With a happy shuffle to the carriage, your headmaster opens the door for you and gestures inside. He will accompany you to the castle tonight, and he has a secret to share along the way. As you turn back around, Daphne and your giant have also transformed their outfits and are now fully kitted out themselves. Daphne carries the black and white sleepy cat inside a big fluffy basket. Truthfully, they still look a little grumpy, but you offer them a gentle tickle under their chin and they let out a reluctant but satisfied purr. And now, you and your wonderful crew are ready for the wizard's winter ball. From here, the black carriage looks tiny, far too small for all of you to fit inside, especially your giant. But as you step in, the interior transforms, and an enormous deluxe carriage surrounds you with soft chairs, warm carpet, and even a small log fire bubbling away in the corner. A mini Christmas tree sits in the middle, wrapped with golden fairy lights, and the carriage is lined with emerald garlands dotted with frosted pine cones. Somehow, after all this time, this magical school never fails to surprise you. In the next moment, the carriage gently jerks, and Olwyn begins to guide you now down the rickety pathway, up a shallow, winding hill, and back towards the castle of your dreams. A quiet anticipation mingles through the carriage as you share a smile with your companions. As the gentle rhythm of the carriage lulls you into a deep relaxation, your mind begins to wander. You imagine what the great hall will look like with all of the decorations the Christmas tree, and the enchanted ceiling. You paint a picture of all the delicious food that you are bound to enjoy at the Christmas banquet.
In the next moment, the headmaster shuffles between you and your best friend and whispers with a reserved excitement that it is tradition for the headmaster to give each of the students a small Christmas gift. And, well, he wanted to give yours in person. With a subtle wink, the headmaster holds out his arms in front of him, and two small square boxes emerge from his enormous sleeves as he chuckles at his own mischief. One box lands perfectly in your hand, and the soft blue velvet tickles your palm. Well, what are you waiting for? comes the soft voice of the headmaster. As you slowly open the box and reveal the gift inside, you stare in complete wonder. There sits a beautiful handmade wristwatch with a soft leather strap glistening with gentle silver and humming with a magical radiance. There are intricate dials on the watch face, rotating at various speeds, and from different angles you can see tiny cogs inside the watch, all working together to bring this impeccable jewellery to life. Your headmaster admits that he had these made specially, and they are not just a pretty accessory either. Oh no, these watches hold a powerful enchantment. The old professor asks if you have ever heard of a time turner. Well, this is very similar, but not quite the same. With a few simple twists, you can use this watch to revisit your favorite memories. Unlike the time turner, you cannot change or affect the scene or interact with anyone inside. You are simply an observer, reliving those precious moments that you never want to forget. Two clicks right and six clicks left should do the trick, he adds with a glint in his eye. As you strap the enchanted watch to your wrist, you are completely speechless, but you show your gratitude by falling into a tight, warm embrace, and you savor this wonderful gift. The kindness and generosity of your lovely headmaster is almost overwhelming. He is your very own guardian, watching over you and keeping you safe and filling your days here with magic, mischief, and love. Little Daphne watches on, a happy tear in her eye, and you bring her into the group hug now. She is quickly followed by your gentle giant, who you know never passes up the opportunity for a big cuddle. You feel blessed to call all of these people your friends. Before you know it, the carriage comes to a stop, and you can hear the faint hustle and bustle outside. The headmaster announces that he must leave you now. He can't be seen to have his favourites, he admits with a gentle smile, but he hopes that you all have a wonderful time tonight. And in the blink of an eye, you watch him disappear into nothing more than a silhouette before vanishing completely. You, your best friend, and Daphne stare in awe but your giant simply chuckles away with glee, telling you that the wily old headmaster always has a trick up his sleeve. 
Without another hesitation, you take a deep breath and open the carriage door, stepping out once again into the cool, frosty night on the doorstep of the castle. Outside, many witches and wizards are arriving in groups or pairs, talking away happily and laughing together. You give some of your friends a smile and a wave, and you notice that everyone is heading inside the castle quickly. With a glance at your new watch, you see why. It is nearly time for the great ball to begin. You give Olwyn one final stroke and thank her for bringing you here tonight and you promise to visit her in the Forbidden Forest soon. Your best friend leads the way now as you head up the thick concrete steps and through the enormous iron doors of the castle that are illuminating a soft golden glow. There is an excited buzz in the air as you follow behind a gaggle of students, weaving down the long echoey corridors that are kissed by candlelight. Before you know it, you arrive at the doors of the Great Hall, where a large crowd waits in anticipation. The deputy headmistress works her way through the group and stands in front of the huge wooden doors. She raises her arms and the crowd falls into silence. With a warm smile and a radiance glowing from her cat-like eyes, she insists that before any feasting tonight, there will be some organized, well-mannered frivolity. And she encourages you all to put your best foot forward and to enjoy the wizard's winter ball. Right on cue, the doors swing open. And as you step through, you are met by the most enchanting sight unlike anything that you have seen here before. The first thing to catch your eye is the enormous Christmas tree, decorated with silver and blue baubles, frosted pine cones, and enchanted ribbon that ripples gently over the branches. At the very top is a bright silver star, pulsing proudly, easily a hundred feet above you. The tree is the centerpiece of the smooth white dance floor in a perfect square. To the right of the dance floor is a ghostly band of musicians with a collection of various instruments playing a lovely, festive melody that dances through the air. In the four corners of the Great Hall are enormous ice sculptures, each depicting one of the four founders of the school, and each illuminated in either red, yellow, green or blue. They stand proud watching over the proceedings, and where their eyes meet in the middle of the hall, there is a beautiful swirling starlight that seems to envelop the Christmas tree. The enchanted ceiling is peppered with infinite stars, and the moon beams down into the hall, illuminating the dance floor with a silver spotlight. The braziers around the hall are burning with flames of sapphire, emerald, and crimson, 
and the gargoyles underneath are wearing magical Christmas jumpers. The teacher's table has been turned to ice and decorated with Christmas ornaments and garlands. Your gentle giant has already made himself comfortable, and there, in the middle, on his throne of ice, sits the headmaster, rejoicing in the swelling scene around him. You and your best friend share an unstoppable grin as you take in every little detail. You are surrounded by an overwhelming beauty and filled with the spirit of festive magic. Here, in this castle that you call home, you can simply be you. Dotted around the hall are huge circular tables draped with smooth white cloth. And over to your right, you can see little Daphne hopping up and down in the distance, calling you over excitedly. On the way to your table, you pass by many of the castle ghosts all of whom seem to be in a very jolly mood, even the usually grumpy ones. The big baron floats above you and gives a bellowing, <laughs> and the proud countess is already practicing her ballroom dancing as she swirls past you, whispering a quiet one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, the court jester jiggles his ghostly hat off his head and removes several snowballs from it, throwing them into the air. Each one explodes in a chorus of mini fireworks and suddenly there are beautiful pockets of color erupting through various parts of the hall. The ghostly jester gives a proud bow and a mischievous cackle. You meet Daphne now and arrive at your table, but before you can even think about taking your seat, the headmaster stands up and the entire hall descends into a new silence. He welcomes each and every one of you to the wizard's winter ball. The feast is almost prepared, he says, but first, we shall dance, and with a flick of his wand, a golden stardust swirls around the room, and the musicians begin to play an enchanting melody that glides through the hall. Instantly, you are swaying, smiling, and even humming along to the tune. Without another hesitation, you take to the dance floor with your best friend and little Daphne, and you join in with the crowd of students, teachers, and ghosts who are all swirling together in harmony. You allow yourself to completely let go now. There is no time for inhibition or worry here tonight. This is Christmas, a time for joy and friendship, for laughter, music and dancing. In the next moment, you are met by a beautiful thick snow falling from the enchanted ceiling. It peppers the great hall with specks of silver and white, reflecting in the glow of the moon. But before the snow lands on the floor, 
it disappears and just before they touch your cheek the flakes evaporate. You move in perfect rhythm taking in this beautiful scene. You gaze around the room and watch the happy faces swirling as you all circle the huge Christmas tree. Even your potions professor is dancing, albeit very reluctantly and stiff, with the assistant headmistress who seems to revel in his awkwardness and is almost chuckling to herself. For a brief second, the potions master cannot hide a little smirk before straightening his face quickly and reigniting his serious, stoic demeanor. Your sleepy cat is free from their fluffy basket now and perched on the teacher's table directly in front of the headmaster enjoying a very relaxing head scratch. The kind old professor nods his head and smiles at you, his piercing blue eyes glowing over his half moon spectacles. Your sleepy cat wears a smug expression and their eyes tell you that there is simply no chance at all that they will be joining you on the dance floor. No, thank you, they are quite content where they are. You take in all of this wonderful magic that completely envelops you and you allow yourself to just enjoy this time dancing in your own way with whoever you want to and basking in the eternal enchantment of the wizard's winter ball. As the music comes to an end, the hall erupts in a thunderous applause, led by the headmaster. The band gives a low bow before sitting down for a short break. You work your way through the hall and back towards your table, taking your seat between your best friend and the lovely Daphne. And then, like clockwork, there is a concoction of smells drifting in from the kitchen now, and you are met by the faint whiff of roast Christmas dinner. As the crowds settle and the excitement builds for the feast, you watch the headmaster stand up and tap his small sherry glass. Once again, bringing the room to silence. With a proud gesture to the huge double doors at the end of the hall, he announces that dinner is served. The wooden doors swing open and an endless line of silver platters float into the great hall, bobbing in their own rhythm and topped with an infinite collection of festive food. The Christmas feast begins to weave among the tables and there is a new hustle and bustle echoing through the hall. Trays of turkey and beef wellington drift around you. There are crispy roast potatoes honey-baked carrots and parsnips. 
Large silver jugs of hot gravy and cranberry sauce land next to you, and the big bowl of Brussels sprouts receives mixed reactions from your table. You can smell braised red cabbage, cauliflower cheese, and pigs in blankets, while a plate of roasted chestnuts and Christmas stuffing is placed near your best friend. There are huge cauldrons of mulled wine, cider, and sparkling juice floating through the hall, and even hot chocolate for dessert. These cauldrons are accompanied by trays of freshly baked mince pies. You can see various cheeses and cold cuts stacked on five-tier plates, with crackers, grapes, and chutney. There is hot apple crumble, Christmas cake, and pudding with rum sauce. You see trays of chocolate logs and jam roly-poly with hot custard. You take in this wonderful moment and enjoy all of the sights, sounds and smells greeting you as bit by bit you begin to fill your plate, picking out your favourite Christmas treats. This truly is a feast to remember. As the banquet begins and the noise settles, you take your time to taste and savour every bite. The food is absolutely incredible and many of the flavours dancing across your taste buds give you little flashbacks to Christmases of the past, and you smile at some of the lovely memories you have made over the years. You can hear the faint crackle of the fires gurgling around the great hall, coupled with the quiet hustle and bustle of conversations over dinner. With every mouthful, you feel a wonderful warmth filling your stomach. This sensation begins to tingle through your arms and legs and over your entire body, bringing you deeper and deeper into complete comfort. All of a sudden, you see Daphne appear from underneath the table, looking very suspicious. At the same time, you feel a faint brush on your ankles. You lift up the tablecloth to find your black and white sleepy cat perched at your feet their tail swishing happily as they devour a tiny Christmas feast given to them secretly by little Daphne. You smile at the mischief at play here, and you join in by placing a very small portion of cream under the table. Your sleepy cat gives your hand a gentle sniff before lapping up the cream and purring away beneath you. You think that maybe, just maybe, you are friends again. You gaze around this mighty castle, incomparable in its beauty. The faint snowfall from the ceiling has turned into a gold stardust that ripples through the air and drifts over the tables, giving an ethereal glow to the scene. Many of the ghosts are still bobbing around the room and having lovely interactions with the students as they enjoy their very own 
ghostly, festive banquet. The proud ice sculptures are watching over the feast, and the enormous Christmas tree pulses with a powerful radiance, casting a deep, protective charm over the entire hall. You look to the teacher's table and share a smile with your gentle giant and the deputy headmistress. Your gaze meets the piercing blue of the wily old headmaster and he lifts his glass to you with a kind smile. You return the gesture and share a toast across the room. A light conversation mingles over the table and you dip in and out as you continue to slowly pick away at your Christmas feast. You feel so lucky to be able to spend this festive season in the most magical place on earth with your very best friend by your side and a whole host of unforgettable companions. The frantic excitement has eased now and you are in a state of peace and comfort. You are filled with pure happiness and childlike wonder. You are completely entranced by this magical castle and this wizarding world that you call home. And as the winter banquet finally comes to an end and you finish your last bite, the deputy headmistress stands up and swirls her wand over her head. In what feels like seconds, the silver platters have carried themselves out of the great hall, and the plates and cutlery disappear from view. The tablecloths are wiped clean and removed, revealing tables of pure blue ice, which remarkably are not cold to the touch. And as the headmistress finishes her spell, she calls for silence, and once again the hall obeys. It is tradition here, she says, to send a Christmas wish to someone who is close to you, but who cannot be here tonight. She gestures for all the students to stand now and take out their wands. As you rise to your feet and take your wand from your pocket, the roof opens up and the enchanted ceiling has been replaced by the very real night sky, where high above you the constellations group together and glow in a shimmering radiance. The thought of someone special fills your heart and you think of the Christmas wish you would like to offer them this year. Together, the entire hall lifts their wands and as one, you cast your spell. A soft orb in your favorite color pulses at the end of your wand, before gliding up very slowly into the sky and mingling among the other wishes in all the shades of the rainbow. You stare at your orb, drifting closer to the stars now, and even from this distance the light pulses brighter than ever. It is a light of hope and perseverance, of gratitude and of love 
and you know exactly where to send it. There is a kaleidoscope of colour dancing through the night and backed by the pulsing constellations. The light from the stars eases your mind and a sense of tranquility runs through you. Looking up at this majestic display, you suddenly have the feeling that everything will be okay. You watch in a silent wonder as the glowing orb carrying your wish moves further and further away. One by one, the lights begin to fade. Your heart is full as you watch your own orb gently soften now before finally disappearing out of sight. Your Christmas wish has arrived. You meet the gaze of your headmaster whose watery eyes smile at you. With a sway of his arms, he gestures for you to check the time. You remember the magical gift wrapped around your wrist, and as you pull back your sleeve, your watch is pulsing in a rich silver and blue, as if calling out to you. You remember the headmaster's instructions, two clicks right and six clicks left, and before you know it, you are turning the dial on the watch. Gradually now, you feel yourself lifting up and turning around as the details of the great hall fade from view. Piece by piece, the picture of one of your favorite memories is building in front of you. It is a memory that fills you with love, with hope and comfort. There is nothing that you can change about this moment, nor would you want to. Here you are simply an observer, remembering all the little details that make this memory so special. There might be certain smells greeting you now, and you can slowly piece together the new surroundings of where this memory took place as the image becomes clearer and clearer. Being here inside this memory brings you to a state of pure peace. This memory is yours and nobody else's. Nothing will change that and nothing can take that away. You allow yourself to bathe in this scene and to watch this beautiful moment that you will never forget. With a happy heart, you vow to hold on to this memory, to carry it with you wherever you go, and in difficult times, to let it guide your way. You embrace these wonderful feelings and thoughts 
as you allow this memory to wash over you. You can let go and become one with this moment of magic. You know that you can return to this memory or any other whenever you need to, and you can allow yourself to feel comforted, loved, and completely at peace. Your thoughts turn to the wonderful headmaster and you thank him silently for his precious, irreplaceable gift. And bit by bit, you watch this memory gradually fade from view and you feel yourself being lifted up one more time. Slowly now, you are being gently lowered, and patterns of colour begin to trace over your eyelids, and the faint crackle of a fire greets you. As the colours become clearer and more defined, you realise that you are safely back inside your house dormitory, the lovely Daphne holding your hand, and your best friend by your side, as always. You share with them the magic that you have witnessed and your best friend tells you that they had the same experience. Daphne admits that when she saw you both reach for your watches, she decided to bring you straight here, away from the hustle and bustle, to give you time to reflect in peace. The three of you share a warm embrace in total silence, as an unspeakable comfort fills the air. Your memory may have faded for now, but those feelings remain. Daphne gives you a smile and whispers that she would like to give you both an early Christmas present. With the click of her fingers, two identical parcels drop onto your laps, wrapped beautifully in brown parchment. Your lovely elf gestures with her eyes to open it. You pull away the paper and reveal a soft, handmade Christmas jumper in your favourite colour. Your initial has been embroidered into the top corner and a classy design decorates the front. It is a collection of small snowflakes surrounding a family of reindeer knitted in a silhouette. Daphne admits that she made these by hand and not an ounce of magic was used. You smile at the kindness of your wonderful companion and together you both bring Daphne into a tight hug, thanking her for the thoughtful and beautifully made gift. And then you reveal that actually you have a present for her too. Daphne's eyes widen as she clasps her hands together and beams with delight, asking if she can open it now. With an irresistible chuckle, you reach under your bed and pull out a perfect cuboid wrapped in a dark emerald paper and fastened with a golden bow. With slightly shaky hands, Daphne pulls the bow, 
and your magical gift falls open by itself, revealing a brand new tea set. This is of the highest quality, you tell her, and although she already makes delicious tea, you both thought she might like some nice new equipment to work with. You watch Daphne's eyes fill as she giggles almost uncontrollably with pure happiness. She throws herself into your arms and thanks you both from the bottom of her heart, admitting that she has the best friends in the entire world. In the next moment, she composes herself and insists that you are to try her first batch of tea. She shuffles away now in complete contentment, carrying her new gift and humming happily. You share a quiet smile with your friend and you both agree to wait until Christmas Day before you exchange your gifts. Together, you reminisce on the incredible adventure that you have had today, and you revel in the magic of the Wizard's Winter Ball. You share secrets and fantasize about all the future adventures that you might share in this world of wonder. You feel so lucky to have this incredible person by your side through this unforgettable saga. In the next moment, you can hear the pitter-patter of happy feet once again, and the hypnotic aroma of lavender greets you. Daphne reappears round the corner, smiling from ear to ear and carrying her brand new tray, topped with a handmade teapot, giving off a swirling steam. Following at her feet is your black and white sleepy cat, strutting proudly into the room and making a beeline for your bed. They jump up to join you, curl up in your arm, and drift off to sleep almost immediately. Their rich, deep purr fills you with a tingling comfort and warmth. Daphne floats your teacup over to you, which is the perfect temperature in your hands. The smell of lavender washes over you, and you feel your eyelids blinking slow and heavy, as if a new weight has been added to them. This enchanted tea has been brewed to help you enter a deep, restful sleep. It will absorb any remaining tension and melt away any lingering thoughts, allowing you to sink into a new heaviness and drift off in peace. You take your first sip and there is a beautiful warmth filling your mouth and softening your tongue. Your entire body begins to tingle with a gentle vibration and you feel each and every muscle begin to relax as your mind becomes completely clear. There is a softness over your brow and your eyes are heavy. No matter how hard you try, it is impossible to keep them open. Your cheeks are warm 
and your tongue and jaw soften. You allow this enchanted tea to work its magic as little Daphne takes the cup from your hands and places it on the bedside table. You lie back gently and feel yourself becoming heavier, heavier and heavier. A beautiful warmth trickles down your neck, relaxing all of the muscles in your neck and shoulders. Your arms hang heavy by your side and your hands tingle with a soft vibration. There is a new warmth in your chest and your belly as your breathing slows down. Your stomach expands as you breathe in this healing air and as you breathe out, you release any remaining thoughts. You can let go. Your legs are filled with a softness that is melting away any tension in your thighs and your calves. Your feet tingle as your whole body becomes heavy and completely free. You are safe here within this castle of your dreams. You are protected by Daphne and enveloped in the magic of this hypnotic herbal tea. The sound of your purring companion and the crackling fire washes over you as bit by bit you go deeper and deeper. You allow yourself to just release. You have had the most incredible festive season here, making so many unforgettable memories, and you smile at the thought of many more adventures still to come in this magical world that is your home.